Page after page, item after item, Lloyd Minster's 2013 budget was passed yesterday during a marathon council meeting. They started at 8.30 in the morning and didn't finish until almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Some of the key highlights include council endorsing a $22 million operating surplus that will partially finance an $89 million investment in capital projects. As for property taxes, homeowners Owners can expect to see roughly $249 per year added to their property tax bill. That is, of course, when the assessment growth is confirmed in the first quarter of 2013. Homeowners looking to save money on their property taxes by paying it off early will no longer be able to do so. The city has discontinued that practice, saying it will save them roughly $350,000 a year. And $6.85 million will be put towards road work and the street improvement program for next year. Another big issue that came out of City Council discussions yesterday was public transit. Trying to get from one part of the city to another is nearly impossible in Lloydminster. The border city isn't home to a transit system, and while the topic has been discussed for quite some time, City Council will now take an inside look at the issue. Nara Manisa has the story. Our city sees its fair share of traffic. Lloydminster has a population of 30,000, but there is no public transportation if someone is without wheels. Many residents have spoken out, and it has City Council's attention. I'm pro-public transit. We've got to do something. We've got to figure out a way to do something and uh, move that forward. The issue of public transit was brought up during a special council meeting Wednesday. Councillors were discussing the 2013 budget, but you won't be seeing a bus on city streets anytime soon. And I think the key word is projected deficit because uh, that that's going in a in a transit system you have to be prepared to operate at a deficit. It'll be difficult to cost recover. Councillor Alan Kayford says he doesn't oppose public transit, but says it would be too costly. I really think what we need to try and determine is is how many people there are living in this city that would use public transit and what time of day they would use it. Some councillors say paying $50,000 for a consultant to look into the issue is simply not worth it. And that's something the mayor agrees with. I think the best thing to do is quantify it. If it's an online survey, if it's an open house, whatever it is, I think we'll build the momentum that'll get. As for what happens next, City Council will discuss the issue internally and decide whether or not public transit is a viable solution for our city. It's not known when a decision will be made. So if you're planning on getting around the border city, you'll have to either rely on your own vehicle, a taxi, or your own two feet. Nara Manisa, New Cap News. Well, it's been a record-breaking year for the SPCA as far as fundraising goes. A welcome relief for the organization after a devastating loss from a summer storm in 2011 halted its efforts to move to a bigger facility. And as Kelsey Bloxham explains, a more suitable space was one of the topics up for discussion during yesterday's budget talks at City Hall. Lots of kitty cats. Lots of kitty cats. Some uh, are doubled up. The SPCA has made do in these close quarters for years now. Just 5,000 square feet for their 12 full-time employees, numerous volunteers, and of course the hundreds of animals they see come through the shelter doors each year. They were close to getting a new facility. After years of fundraising, a building was donated. And while it wasn't a suitable space, they had a buyer. And the money from that building sale would get the organization on their way. But on July 18th of 2011, a quick and dirty storm struck and the building torn to pieces. It felt absolutely crippling at the time. Um, in hindsight, quite honestly, we're in a much better place and, and we realized that was a Band-Aid solution. I, I don't feel that we had um, the same level of partnership that we do today with the city. And, and if that was part of the impetus to get this, to move this project forward, great. Under its capital plan, the city has allocated $600,000 for a building shell for the SPCA. The nonprofit would then be responsible for the interior, a cost that could run between two and three million dollars. I know that the city is behind the facility, 
I think it's a very positive thing for the city and the SPCA, and I think it's just going to snowball and, and generate uh, some great interest. But the question of where their new home will be is still up for discussion. One possibility, the city's public works yard. It's what we've talked about with city management. I think council, in wanting to make sure that there's long-term planning happening in the city, wants to really look closely that that is the best site for us. I think it's not a, a bad spot at all. It has some merit. Are there other spots that are suitable? I believe there is. It's a tricky thing because we want to have people to have access to use the facility. Um, and that's your residence, but I think most residents wouldn't want to have, you know, an SPCA or Humane Society uh, and our, the city's pound, because we're all three, um, sitting right next to your back door. Discussions on the subject will continue into the new year. It is the city's hope to move forward with plans in the spring, something that can't come soon enough for the SPCA bursting at the seams. Kelsey Bloxham, New Cap News. The man charged in connection with a fatal school crash in St. Paul was back in court today. Richard Benson appeared via satellite from the Edmonton Remand Center where he's currently being held. Benson will be tried by judge alone in the Court of Queen's Bench. Today's appearance was to set a date for trial or a preliminary inquiry, but neither happened. Instead, his case was adjourned to review and seek further disclosure, pushed back to January 10th of next year. Today's court appearance was Benson's first since being denied bail in the beginning of November and comes on the heels of a fundraiser that raised over $83,000 to be split between the three families hit hardest by that tragic crash.